Um, what I want to do is, whoa, a few things. Um, essentially, we have three more classes for this semester. We have today, uh, we do not have Thanksgiving class. Um, it's been a rough week and I'm tired, so I'm not even going to bother making a joke about who's going to bring what for dinner on Thanksgiving, all right? Uh, I usually do that in, in my Tuesday and Thursday classes, but I, I, I don't have the energy to do that today. Um, then we have next week, Tuesday and Thursday. Thursday, I want to be a work day for your project, to finalize things, to get any last minute questions answered, and so on. So I, I want that Thursday to be that. Today I'm covering some things. Um, you are welcome to ask for suggestions of stuff for me to cover on Tuesday. You know, um, we'll make it, you know, maybe we'll make it an all request Tuesday. You know, I listen to too much radio growing up, I guess. But we can do something like that. I mean, if you don't, have, if you don't request something, that doesn't mean you're going to get out of class, by the way, just as a warning. All right? <laughs> so if you have something you want to cover, it's probably best to request it, because otherwise I get to pick the topic. And, and, and I'll pick a topic that I think is interesting. And, and whether you do or not, well, um, you know, you probably will. But, you know, if there's something in, uh, in particular that you're interested in, um, feel free to send me an email, and I'll, I'll see how it fits in the schedule. Now, with your project, let me briefly explain the, the purpose of the project and, and discuss it a little bit. You know, we cover a lot of stuff in this class. Um, that being said, the purpose of the project really is to take what we've learned and apply it in different ways. All right? So, every single scenario that you uh, are, are going to cover in your project, we haven't necessarily done exactly that. There may be some things that you want to do that we haven't exactly covered. Now, in some cases, we may have covered the concepts, and all you need to do is take those concepts and apply them to, uh, to uh, your particular situation. All right? Let me just give you a, a quick example for that. You may have some sort of scheme where the person logs on, and it remembers who they are, and when you go to the edit customer information page, it automatically populates that. Well, we've done something similar to that, at least the last part of it, in the sense that we've been able to retrieve data into a details view or grid view, all right, based on some criteria. Now, in our case, the criteria has come from the form, has come from the query string, but it shouldn't take too much of a stretch to see that that criteria can also come from a session variable. All right, so the session variable can remember who we are or can remember our choice somehow. And then the uh, parameter in the uh, SQL data source for the details view or grid view can use the session variable. So that's what I mean about taking what we've done. We haven't explicitly done that in class, but my hope is, and one of the reasons for the project, is to take what we've learned in class and apply it different ways. In addition, there may be some things that we have sort of covered, not exactly covered, whatever. Again, part of the purpose of the project is for you to look into it and try to figure out what you need to do. Now, granted, I'm there to give you a hand with that. Um, and uh, unless it's something totally out of the blue that we really haven't touched at all, what I will likely do is Try to point out what we have talked about in the class that is relevant to what you're trying to solve. And, and, and maybe give you some tips as far as how to proceed. All right? Here's what I want to do. So, so that's, that's in general sort of going to be the approach over the next week. Today I have something specific I want to cover. All right? So we'll cover that. Um, when we're done, we'll, when, when we're done with what I want to cover, we'll go... To the lab. So this might not necessarily be a full lecture. All right. Um, bring your project questions to lab. Share your project with other people. Show them what you're working on and what's working, what isn't working, or get some ideas from other people, or wherever you are in your project, you know, and go from there. Um, Tuesday again, either you're going to send me requests or I'm going to just pick a topic. 
to go over. And then next Thursday will be a work day. If you remember, there were a couple of things that we didn't like about the delete. Um, delete faculty that we had. One of them was that there was no confirmation. You click delete and that, that guy was gone. Alright? Which is the default behavior of the default behavior of the, the grid view. But again, we can customize it to do certain things. So we'll do that. The other thing that we're going to do is we are going to try to give some more descriptive error messages. In other words, we had uh, a case where if you did, couldn't delete a uh, faculty member, it simply said something like there might be related rows in such and such table. Let's see if we can do better than that and actually display a message that says that this person has six students that they advise, therefore they can't be deleted. All right, a little more descriptive error message uh, than that. All right, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Now, is the purpose of this discussion simply to talk about how to give more detailed error messages? Not really. The purpose of this discussion and the reason that we're going to do this is um, to talk about something that we've half done but half not done, and that is Pulling a, um, having a SQL statement, all right, having a SQL statement that isn't tied to something visual, all right? All our SQL queries have been tied to something visual. That is, we've made a SQL query and we've bound it to a, a list view or a, uh, or, I'm sorry, a details view or a, a grid view, all right? There are cases, though, where you don't necessarily want to tie it to anything visual. A classic example of that is verifying someone's login and password, you know, user ID and password. You know, you're not binding that to a grid view. You're accepting two text boxes, running out to the database, see if that value exists, and then doing something if it exists, doing something else if it doesn't exist. All right? So, um, this is how we're going to look at that particular feature or, or, or capability one way to do it. Another thing to remember, again, is there are so many ways to do every different thing, uh, and this is just one of the ways to do it. All right, let's go download the example and go from there. Um, FYI, this may sound odd, but I suffer from what are called silent migraines, or, uh, well, m migraines, and sometimes they're silent, which means I don't necessarily get a headache, but I can't see for a period of time. I get that. I get okay. migraines. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when it's done, I get a headache. Sometimes when it's, sometimes it's just, I have the episode and, and it's done. Yeah, I never get a headache. Yeah. I get the visual distortion. Yeah, I sometimes get headaches sometimes don't. Uh, I feel like I'm getting one now. So if I go a period of time where I can't see, <laughs> uh, that will explain what's going on. Uh, I could see, yeah, it is the weirdest thing. Yeah, the, the, you look at disappears. So yeah, right. Right. It, that's exactly the same thing uh, it is with me. And uh, the first time I had it, I was, I was flying in on I-90 in the Cleveland, you know, 65 miles an hour. And, and Talk about being scared. Plus, I, I wasn't aware of that at the time. I, I thought I was having a, a, some problem with my eye. I thought I, so when I called, I called a, an eye doctor. I didn't call a I didn't medical doctor. Thing. Yeah. I went screaming to the eye doctor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. My eyes, my eyes. I'm blind. Exactly, exactly. They looked at me and told me, you know, there's nothing wrong with your eyes. The neurologist finally convinced me what was going on. Yep. I will say, I, I was treated for, for migraines, and I, I don't get them near as bad as I used to, uh, or as frequently, or, or whatever, but I, I still on occasion get, uh, get this. So this could make for an interesting class. <laughs> mine only lasts about 15 minutes. Yeah, mine's
it's probably around that range. If I can sit here and talk, uh, maybe yeah, may, maybe uh, we can talk through it. And uh, I'm trying to think what example to pull. I think this is probably the one I want. No, this is not the one I want. The doctor convinced me that I was better off not treating it than uh, taking the medicine for it. I did not like the medicine I was taking for it. That's what he told me. He said, don't bother. Um, Especially if you don't get the headaches. I, I, uh, I, I had two medications. I had one that was, you know, a, a painkiller. So when I was experiencing a headache, I would take it, you know. And then I had one that I took every day that did something to the blood. And I did not like how that made me feel. It, it made me feel, it made me feel like I was hanging upside down. You know how the blood rushes to your head? That sort of weird sensation. I like felt that all the time. And oh, I, I did not like that. But it did seem to work on the on the plus side. So. Yeah, he told me the side effects of the drugs were worse than the, <laughs> uh, the migraine, especially if I wasn't getting a headache. Just yeah. Go home, and forget about it. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, thank you. I did, I did see, I don't know if you've seen uh, the comedian Louis C.K. Oh, uh, he's pretty funny. Uh, he, he, and don't worry, I won't, have to, I won't have to hit the pause on this one because he does have some kind of rough humor. But the one thing he said pretty funny is when you reach a certain age, doctors don't even try to fix you anymore. It's like you go in, he said he went in with a shoulder problem. The doctor's like, yep, yep, you got such and such. What are you going to do? Nothing. <laughs> you know, not, yeah. If you're 20 years old, maybe I'd operate, but now take an aspirin, you know. Maybe Leonard had some might help. Pardon me? I said maybe Leonard had some might help. Um, hard to say. All right. Anyhow, let's open up our website. We're going to do the first thing first of um, checking the deletion. And I think that's the one we want. It makes the programming hard when that happens too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Reading code. laughs> yeah. deletion on this grid view. two things that we're going to try to fix. First thing, when we go onto this page, I click delete. <laughs> it just says error. Uh, I must have really been in a hurry when I coded that one, all right? Because usually I would say something like error. It could be this. It could be that. So the one thing we're going to do is we're going to absolutely check to see why we can't delete this person, all right? Now, the other thing is... If we go in and go to someone that does not have oops, anything, it deletes them and they're gone. And there's no confirmation at all. What we're going to do is we're going to actually put that confirmation up client side. This is the one instance where... Um, an alert, or, or actually a confirmation box, I think is good. Normally, like for validation, you know, even not not even necessarily in this class, but in 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 any of my JavaScript classes, I suggest that you don't throw up alert boxes.
because that sort of is ugly. They get in the way. It's better to display your, your error messages right on the form. But here's one where I do want the user to stop, look at it, think about it, and then click OK. So I'm going to go and edit this. I'm going to go and I'm going to convert that field into a template. All right. Why do I want to convert it to a template? Which field is it? I can't read it. it <laughs> wow, both of us, huh? It, no, it is the is the elite uh, uh, or the elite, the edit, delete, and uh, uh, cancel oh, okay. button. It, it, it's the command button. Elite is the combination of edit and, and delete, I think. I think that's where I was getting at. Why do I want to make that a template field? So we validation and error. Yeah, I mean, there's a very simple answer. Why do we ever want to make something uh, a, a template field? We want to make it a template field if we want to do something other than the default behavior. So, again, the default behavior for that guy is to, you click it, it's deleted, all right? We want to throw some different behavior in there, all right? And therefore, we're going to make it to, uh, we're going to change it to a template field so that we can go in and we can actually um, edit and manipulate um, it to get it to do different uh, than what we want. So in other words, if you want to take a text box and add a drop down, uh, you know, change it to a drop down, you make it into a template field. If you want a text box and you want to add validation to it, you make it into a template field. If you want to take this delete statement and pop up an alert box to confirm the deletion, you make it into a template field. So I'll make that into a template field. I will go up here and edit template. can go into the item template now and I can add some properties onto that delete link. And the property I'm going to add is on client click. All right. Guess my award for the most descriptive property name uh, in history. What does on client click do? On client click is the code that you want to put in when the, the client side code that you want to put in when this link gets clicked. So what I want to do is I want to pop up a box and say is it okay to delete? Um, actually that's not an alert box. Actually that's a, I've been calling it an alert box. It's like an alert box. Actually it's a confirm box. So what I will say is on client click Confirm are you sure? Then in addition to that, actually I, I missed uh, a word there. I'm gonna say return confirm are you sure. What is now is that that's not code, that's just check or text, right? The return part kind of threw me. Okay, uh, yeah, it is. The return part says, okay, 
let, let, let's, let's think through and let's, uh, let's talk about JavaScript and let's talk about JavaScript functions, specifically this one. A confirm box in JavaScript pops up. Well, let's, let's Google it and find out exactly what it pops so up. So that is code. Yeah, that is the, the, con, the word confirm is code. Uh -huh. What's in parentheses is text. Yeah, the returns code too, right. That's JavaScript. That's JavaScript, right. Which is apparently different than Java. Which is different than Java. <laughs> All right. The confirm button, here's an example of it. You click on that, it shows a confirm box. Okay, you get an OK and a cancel. <clears throat> an OK would mean it's OK to delete. Cancel would mean it's not OK to delete. Now, that confirm function pops up that confirm box and returns a value. It returns a true or a false. A true represents that OK was clicked. A false represents that cancel is clicked. Now, in JavaScript, we often do something like this. Uh, those of you that have had the, the 215 class, or not 215, 232 class, might remember we've done something like this where we've said, and you do this often in JavaScript, on click equals return validate form. Here, when we look at the code, we're going to see this. something like this. Both those functions presumably are going to return a true or a false. The confirm I know it is because that's a built-in JavaScript. The validate form I'm assuming is a function that I write and I'm assuming it will return true or false. Now what does the return the name of the function do? This function is going to return a true or a false. We're going to take that answer and return it to the onClick event. All right. So we get back from our function a true or false. We take that return value and return it back to the onClick event. And if the onClick event gets a true, it continues on its merry way and, and does what it what it needs to do. If the onClick event gets a false, that stop suppresses and it doesn't continue. All right. So. In a nutshell, that's what's going on here. We're going to pop up that return, uh, or I'm sorry, we're going to pop up that confirm box. It's going to say OK to delete. If the user clicks OK, that function returns a true. If they click cancel, that function returns a false. In either case, that answer, that true or false, will get sent, will get returned back to the on click event, and we'll either be able to proceed or it's going to haul us. All right? So, let's see this in action now. Let's go back into Visual Studio. Return, confirm, are you sure? All right. Now we can go run it. Let's go into this person. Let's look at the HTML that gets generated. In my, in my mind, you know, it's always important to to do this.
Interesting. I did not see that in there. Let's look to see if it's working, first of all. If it's working, I might just be missing the code. Alright, anyhow, delete. Well, not working. In the properties uh -huh. field where you put the stuff in the parentheses, is that quotes or single double quotes? So that's, that's double quotes, and I wonder if that's burning me. I'm going to try changing it to single quotes. was problematic. At any rate, let's go and do a view source now. And here we see the on click. Return confirm. Are you sure? see that before and it wasn't working so uh, interesting All right. um, at any rate that allows me to, to do that and, and pop up the confirmation box <coughs> and not proceed if the user clicks cancel so now when I run this if I hit cancel it doesn't even try to delete it if I hit OK it will try to delete it and it will give me my ad. All right, let's, let's boil this down in a nutshell, all right? What did we do? Um, first of all, we converted that command button field to a template field because we want to go off the defaults. We, we don't want to do exactly what the defaults say. So that's the first thing we do. Second thing we do is we go and we add a on-client click event to the delete button. That will be some JavaScript that happens on the client side when the user clicks that. And we return the results of the confirm function and it seemed to work with single quotes. I don't know if the double quotes were the problem or not, but why tempt fate? All right. So single quotes, re, uh, return confirm, single quotes, are you sure to delete or some sort of message? And and then, then you, you're good to go. All right. I'm, I'm dying of curiosity. I'm gonna, I gotta put the double quotes in and see if it's gonna gripe about that. Still there. I don't know what happened the first time. I think when you saved it. it yeah, I may, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe I didn't tab out of the field or something. I don't know. Maybe you didn't catch it, but yeah. It's working with single or double quotes. All right. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do, when we go to delete Blanchard, um, it tells me that there's an error. All right. And the error is that um, Blanchard has some students that he advises, so we can't delete that. Either that or some courses. Let's go out and look to see what the deal is with Blanchard and why we can't delete them. <coughs> 